In this video, we're going to look at applications of exponential growth and decay. So we're going to look at um, exponential functions and kind of how they apply to life systems like bacteria and things like that. And so in this first example, um, oh, actually, let's, let's start by defining something. So here's going to be our basic structure of these equations. We're going to have that the, the amount at any given time is given by the initial amount. So that y naught is how I'll read that. That little sub-zero is naught. And so y naught, the initial value, times e, which is a constant, it's a button on your calculator, it's not a variable, raised to the kt, where k is the growth or decay constant, and t is the time. Okay, so let's kind of look at this. It says, in our first example, the amount of bacteria in a particular experiment is growing exponentially. They're initially, okay, so initially would be maybe our y naught, five colonies of bacteria, but three hours later, there are 50 colonies of bacteria. Write a function which gives the number of colonies after x hours. So what we know is, our, our, we know our equation is going to take this form. Why not e to the kt? And let's think about what we know so far. They told us that the initial amount was five colonies. So we have five times e to the kt. And then Three hours later, so they even give us this, the time. Our time is going to be three, okay? Um, and then they, they didn't tell us what K is, though, but they told us that after those three hours that the amount is going to be 50. In other words, that that would be 50, okay? Um, and so what we can do now, remember, E is not a variable. Okay, E is a value. What we can do is we can now solve this equation for K, and then we'll have everything we need to write the general form of our function. So I'm going to start by dividing by 5 on each side, okay? Because remember, our goal is to solve for K here. So we have 10 equals E to the K times 3, okay? Now, what we've got here is we are solving for a variable that's in the exponent. We we are trying to figure out what this k is, and to do that, we have to have a knowledge of logarithms, okay? So if you don't know how to do logarithms, go back in and watch my videos over rewriting logs or, um, I forget what I titled them, something about logs. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural log of each side of this equation. Because anything I do to one side, I can do to the other, Okay? And why this is important is, is this little exponent, one of our properties of logs, is it can come around and be a coefficient. And so what we have now is this. I would have the natural log of 10 equals k times 3 times the natural log of e. Another property of exponents is that these two are inverses, so they're no longer important to us. Now, we are almost there, okay? If I come up here, we have that the natural log of 10 equals 3k. And then all I got to do to solve for k is to divide by 3 on each side. And k equals the natural log of 10 all divided by 3. Okay? What that is in a decimal is, let me punch that in the calculator real quick, is that's going to be 0.768. And I did round that, so I rounded it to the nearest thousandth. Um, you want to keep as many decimal places as you can to be accurate. But so, so we did all this work to figure out what k is. But keep in mind, k is not our answer. This one asks us to write a function. So let's kind of come back to what we know. We know if our equation is going to take this structure, what we have is we have y naught, because that's 5. We have e, but now we have that our k value, the value that goes right here in the exponent, is this 0.768. That's what we were doing all this time. And then I'm, I'm going back to using t as my variable because we're trying to write a general equation, not one specifically for three hours later, but one where, okay, what, what, how many is there 10 hours later? How many is there 15 hours later? I can put in any value for t there, and it would tell us how much bacteria there is. This is actually a super fast rate for bacteria to be growing. I just made this example up, so I don't think bacteria really grows that fast, but you get the idea of how the um, structure of those problems work. Let's do another one. Now it says, one gram of strontium-90 is present initially, and two years later, 0.95 grams remain. So it's very slowly decaying. But if that's the case, how much strontium-90 will be present after five years? So this is radioactive decay. This is going to follow our same structure, okay, because it's exponential decay. And so this is going to be very similar to the previous problem. It says initially, 
initially one gram is present and two years later, so I'm putting in two for t, looks like we're going in terms of years, two years later 0.95 remains. So now I've, I've filled in everything from the problem into our equation and now we're just going to solve for k like we did last time. So I have 0.95 equals, one times e is just e, and then that's, I can just write that as 2k, k times 2 is 2k. And let's do like last time, we're solving for that variable that's in the exponents, let's take the natural log of each side, and that allows us to take our exponent and it's going to become out in front, so we have the, um, we have 2k times the natural log of e equals the natural log of 0.95. And if you remember last time, those are inverses, so they undo each other. And so our last step is to solve for k, and I'm gonna do that by dividing by two on each side of this equation. So we have that k equals the natural log of 0.95 all over two. And so I'm going to copy that up here and let's just punch it into our calculator to get the exact, or not the exact, but an approximate value for k. And it looks like our approximate k value is going to be negative 0 0.026. Once again, I'm rounding to the nearest thousandth. And keep in mind, this is a negative because we are decreasing over time. We went from 1 to 0.95. This is not growing. It's decreasing. It's decaying. Okay? And so what we've done, same structure as last time. We filled in what we knew. We worked all the way down. We solved for k, which is that growth or decay constant. And now we're able to write our equation. So if we know our equation is going to take this structure, we can fill in what we know. There's initially one gram of strontium, and then that's times E. And then our K value that we just figured out is negative 0 0.026, and we're multiplying that by T. Using this equation, I could put in any value for T, any number of years, and we could see how much of this strontium-90 remains.